Among the many highlights of Spiel is Arctic Union. Some people that I come to visit every single year because they have some absolutely amazing ideas and some, some tremendous, tremendous games. So, uh, well, let's take a look and see exactly what they're getting up to this time. Welcome to an Arctic Union special edition of GMS Magazine at Spiel 2015. Well, well, we've gone all the way now to the North Pole. We're snowed under, and we're going to start racing now. Yeah, <laughs> because <let's do> it. <laughs> the conditions are perfect. <laughs> so, hey, good. Michael, so, so, so good, so so good, Johnny, to see you at last. Because we've been talking about your game yes. for a fair length of time. It's been for you. Quite an effort to get it out, and now Race to the North Pole is out and looking absolutely yes. beautiful. Tell me about the game a little bit. I am more than happy to. In the Race to the North Pole, you have your own Arctic expedition, and you have set out to conquer the North Pole. But you are not the only uh, competitor to do so. Other players are doing the same thing. And in Race to the North Pole, it's a competition where you're doing desperate dash, trying to get to the North Pole, which is at the center of the game board. We can see that in a second. But the really cool thing is, when the Arctic storm hits, what's going to change? What's going to happen when a storm hits? The landscape, landscape's going to change. Uh, your options are going to change. So you have to readjust to the current new conditions all the time and figure out your strategy based on those facts and what your competitors are doing. So there is a massive element of unpredictability, so you can try to have your strategy, but that's not going to last for long, is it? No, <laughs> this is not chess where you can plan your moves like 10 turns ahead, because a storm will change everything. You have to base your strategy on all the available information, and all the information is open in this game, so you, you know what options the other players have as well. And you have to spe uh, base your strategy on those options that you can see, and do something cunning that other players don't uh, think of. Okay, let's take a look at the game and tell me a little bit how it plays. More than happy to. So you arrive to the Arctic on your ship where you have your expedition members. The goal of the game is to get all members to the center of the board, which is the North Pole. It's a grid movement game. On your turn, you bring up a guy from your ship, if you have anyone there, to your base camp, and you play a card, for example, horizontal vertical step and you do the movement well and at the end of my turn I'm gonna check the weather right now there's four points so we're still gonna go good it's calm weather I refill my hand and that's my turn so playing your turn is very easy but it's a tricky game because when we have accumulated enough points on the storm pile and all the players play their cards on that storm pile now there's seven points let's say it's you and me playing eight points will cause a storm and this will rotate the board and that's when everything changes the impassable cracks which you cannot step across they form in new places on the board every time there's a storm your options just changed because you always play with the three cards in front of you and when the storm happens you get a new set of options in front of you so that is a surprising mechanic and you really have to adjust your strategy to the new conditions. But it's not chaotic luck. There's definite, cause, because all the information is open, so you can plan your moves ahead. Try to read the weather, and that's what everybody else is doing as well. And it's not just the weather that's giving you headache, it's the other competitors as well, because if they ambush you, they can send you back to your ship. And the end game is a lot of fun because you can only enter the North Pole from that direction with the boot symbol. So when you have 
like the last guys coming into the North Pole, they're going to be a lot of ambushing, the storms will change the situation. You, you really, really need to use all that information you have available. And it's an exciting game. And when you get your fourth guy in, you add it to the scoreboard. And when you have all four meeples on the scoreboard, you will win the game instantly. Now, does each explorer uh, race into the North Pole, do they have their own abilities or is it all down to the player? You can see the symbols on these players. Right now, the symbols correlate to these guys on your... For example, here's the Santa, because mm -hmm. his uh, hideout in Finland got discovered, so he's re relocating to North Pole. And you can see that, for example, this meeple here would be Twinklefig. Okay. Right now, in the base game, that's, uh, you can correlate that, and that's all the symbols too. But we do have an app available for the game, and you can find an extra rule in the app that gives special power to all those. Your medic, your carrier, your navigator and leader have their special roles. We didn't want to complicate this game too much, because trust me, it's hard enough to read all the things that happen. Or After a hundred uh, playthroughs, I still find new things in the game and surprising things. Uh, or I always forget to think of something, because that storm mechanism really changes everything. I like that the app is there to enhance the game, but it's not needed. So if I run out of battery, I don't particularly have to have the app. I think that is a very, very clever move. Will you be expanding on the app and updating it so to, to add more depth to the game as well? Definitely. One thing the app does is that we can do um, translations easily for players. Because our rule book is based on pictures, and this is we spent a lot of time creating this rule book. I'm going to go a few. Uh, over a few slides. All the information is already in the picture. This is how you assemble the board, in which order. In the beginning, you remove the blank pieces, because we give players blank pieces so they can tweak the game if they want, because there are people who want dynamite with the game, so they can do those. <laughs> but remove them, because you don't need them, unless you create content on them. Shuffle the cards, deal one to each place on the board, and create a deck in the corner. Take the ice mask tiles, flip them around, and put them into three piles. And the whole rule book explains to, uh, the, um, every bit of the game like that. So we need only translations for the boxes. And right now we're looking for people for doing those translations. And you can find them in the app as well. And we want to have a hundred different translations for the game, because we can share them immediately in the app, which is free. Uh, it's called Diced. I'll show you a photo right here. You can find it from Diced.com. It's available for Android and iOS, doesn't cost you a thing. And one, one cool thing I could add, um, show here, we give players different mechanics, like you said. You can enhance the game as well, or make it a bit different, tweak it to your game group's liking. For example, if you don't want to have so much strategic element and you don't want to count the scores, sometimes it's Friday night and counting might be difficult, you can just use this mechanic. So every time somebody plays a card, you just update the app. And you can, on the bottom of the screen, you can see the likelihood for the storm. So every time you play, the, the chance for the storm raises. And the higher the bar, the more likely it is that on the next card played, there will be a storm. So right now, 60% chance and a blue storm. Here's the blue color, and that's how the storm hits. If you don't use the app, the top of the draw deck tells you which color the storm is that hits, and you use the same arrows for that. That's just one of the mechanics. There are other ones available as well, and we are going to keep updating cool new mechanics in the app. One question, and they may sound silly, but I'm sure it isn't. Because the game board is um, it's not square, uh, as in you have the round bits, and you have to uh, attach. Yep. Uh, two bits together. How does it fit back in the box? Is it easy to repack the game? Uh, that's magic. <laughs> I can actually show you a Please. picture how it actually folds in the box. We have an assembly picture here. So there's two layers of board. There's a bottom board, mm -hmm. and then there's a central part of the top board, which is one solid uh, piece, and that fits in the box. And then the round frame is a foldable frame. So you fold the frame up so it fits in the box. Okay. It's very easy to assemble. Middle, uh, top of board, axle in the middle, top board, and north pole to the center. Because that is, is one thing that whenever I see moving things and attach things, I think, oh my god, how am I going to beat this thing back? But you, you've thought about that one as well. Trust which... me, <laughs> I've had a, quite a few uh, <laughs> headaches with that. <laughs> and we are very happy how it turned out. It's easy to assemble. And please, rotate it. 
try how smooth that it's feather like. Nice. And you have a boat in the corner to help you. Boat in the corner to help you align the board so the cracks match every time. Oh, one more thing though. There's equipment that you can have with your team. You have a couple in the beginning and you find more on the board. And every time you ambush, uh, you might find, find an equipment as well. Because when you do that, you have to take, so you send a competitor back to their ship and you can take, and then, whoa, it's a compass. You can hold on to that or use it immediately. That allows you to rotate the North Pole to any direction. Mm -hmm. And remember, that does not rotate with the weather. Or it could be uh, a hole in the eyes, take you, your guy out, send you back to the ship as well. So ambushing is not automatically the best thing to do. And there's other equipment as well and other hazards. For example, a polar bear, but you will have to get the game to see that. Actually, I have a copy for here, <laughs> copy here for you right now. Thank you, sir. We only you have know, a few left. we will sell out. You, you know what? I am genuinely, I'm not saying this for the camera, I am genuinely impressed. When I saw the prototype last year, it was looking very nice. That is well beyond what I thought it was going to end up looking like. And it's sweet, it's really, really nice. Thanks for saying that. Happy to hear. I, I'm very happy with the product as well. It's I, very quality material. And I think you should be, and I would take a look. I really would take a look at that game because that is going to be quite amazing. And I, I can see you releasing more boards with different gaps in different places to add even more replayability to the game in the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is our first game. We put a lot of effort into that yeah. and there will be more. I do want to say, we should have Tommy just say, show his... Tommy! We should have Tommy showing his face as well because I'm just half of Play More Games. Yeah. The other half is Tommy and we co-designed this game. That's all we needed you for. Say hi. Well, <laughs> thank you. Hello, world. Hello, Paco. Nice right. to meet you. Nice to see you too. Yes, sir. I'm happy to take my five seconds in the sun. So, yeah, can I? We have people playing the game at the table, so I, I won't steal your time anymore. Yeah. Cheers. Hello. <laughs> You're gonna love this. Seriously, viewers, please do take a look. This is very well worth it. Congratulations, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>